could could it be that a feedback loop, so to speak, is created here where it's difficult to tell what is information about the future and what is speculation about the future based on things that you've already discovered, if, if you follow my train of thought there? Oh, sure. I'm, in fact, uh, certain that that will occur. And the point that it does occur, the whole thing has to shut down. There's... um. Uh, this is a, there's this really strange movie. I think it was like, uh, Jimmy Stewart or, you know, uh, somebody like that in the, the forties or fifties. They made this film about the idea of finding, he was a pollster. He was one of the early guys who took polls of, of, of public opinion polls. And it was very expensive to poll the whole United States. And so they happened to find a statistical anomaly, which was this little tiny town where you got the perfect representation of the whole United States, and he could go there and in a matter of a few minutes poll the whole town extremely accurately and then find out how the whole country thought. And, of course, it was just a great scheme until the people in the town found out about it, and then the whole thing uh, went to hell in a handbasket real quick. And I suspect that that's exactly what will occur here, is that at some point we'll reach a critical mass, enough people will become aware of their prescience and so on, but at that point, I also figure that the reports, et cetera, the whole technology will be of very little use because I think that that will be the point at which we cross this critical mass of awakened humans. Tell us more about that. That is really interesting. So do, do you, and do you think that that will mean that we become uh, conscious of our future or will we still be in a situation where we need to access uh, uh, technology to interpret our own you know, unconscious thoughts and ideas pretty much or, or what, what do you what can you say about it more i i don't know in detail and and it'd be a lot of speculation there uh, i do suspect that uh, well linguistically we even have within our um uh, work we have a prediction of about our work just to keep ourselves uh, uh isolated so to speak and so we have this little model of model space we call it and it it predicts uh where we're going to be at and stuff and ex we've ex tightened it down to just our little project and basically we can see that at some point here within the next probably 19 months or so there's going to be a huge paradigm shift in the midst of all of this chaos and we may indeed get to the point where it won't be pertinent to make these kinds of predictions about the future at a planetary level because the and then from the because onward we start getting into speculation but it may be because the level of people that are consciously aware of their ability to participate in shaping the future rises to a critical mass and therefore they actually start shaping that future. <laughs> That's really weird. And I, I think that, yeah, I think that critical mass has to be explained a little bit here. Yeah. The, the, the idea uh, comes from the, some thinking that's done at the um, uh, Army War College here in Leavenworth, um, Kansas, where they teach all the Army officers uh, how to think about things in a strategic fashion. One of the things they like going into is the amount of, of uh, human resources necessary to accomplish individual tasks. And they used to cite, I don't know if they still do, but they used to cite an interesting example, and that was the American Revolutionary War. And they said that the American Revolution, the, the split of the um, uh, United States from uh, controlled by Britain in the 1700s was actually accomplished long before the war even started. And that they figured that it was accomplished fact that it would occur when some 3% of the populace of the, of the United States at that time decided that it should occur. And that that 3%, it was this kind of snowball effect, and it would just happen regardless. And there might have been two or three or four wars as far as they were concerned at that point. But nonetheless, it was a, a going to occur simply because 3% of the population was too large to kill off, couldn't identify them. They would continue to propagate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so at this point, I'm figuring that about 3% of the global population is about 180 million people. And when we reach the point where about 180 million people are uh, aware of things and aware of how uh, uh, the paradigm is shifting and they're starting to think in, in say, the next generation of concepts relative to physics and, and everything else, that at that point our work kind of will fall away because they'll be the leading edge of a much larger wave which would indeed subsume our ability to separate our work from that, that feedback loop, that self-fulfilling prophecy part. Is this um, in any way related to almost the phenomena of the hundredth monkey effect or syndrome that that uh, 
once uh, it spreads to a number of people, so to speak, it, it, it will be known by by the majority at that point. Uh, do you think that that's what's happening here? I think. I think it is indeed related. I don't think we're dealing with a causative effect or anything. I think that there's an underlying uh, energetic causality to both. So in my way of thinking about the universe, the following kind of thing occurs. Uh, every uh, 22 trillion times a second, there's this pulse that comes out from the middle of the universe. It jumps instantly to the middle of every galaxy because it travels beyond the uh, uh, realm of the manifestation of time. From the middle of every galaxy, it goes to the middle of every solar system. From the middle of every solar system, it goes to the middle of every object. And this is the underlying pulse that creates all of the universe. Our brains can conceive of and see it at a second level and sometimes millisecond level, but we can never approach this 22 trillion times a second approach. But because it's so highly energetic um, and because it is at a wave level, such things as the hundredth monkey effect or the critical mass really probably represent more of a situation of 3% of the antenna tuned that they are picking up the wave just slightly ahead of all the rest of the antennas. Hmm. They, the, the, they're in my, in my particular model of universe, there's. Yeah, now I can hear again. You're back. You were just mentioning, uh, your, your model of the, of the universe. Please take it from there. Sure. In my model of the universe, the uh, fact that we're all energetic beings provides support for the theory of the hundred monkey, monkey effect or the idea of a spreading wave of knowledge, whether you actually participate in that knowledge or not. And that also would support the idea that the second generation behind you is able to absorb that knowledge easier and so on because the wave of that knowledge is more or less standing in effect around them all that time. And And so certainly I think that that's part of the processes that our work has to um, uh, take into account. Hmm. Really, really interesting. And you mentioned uh, uh, the first American Revolution or the American Revolution, but there's a lot of people as well who are, who are talking about a potential second American Revolution, and I, and I guess uh, the, the United States' role uh, in the larger scheme of things in where things are heading. Uh, we've seen, for instance, uh, about a month ago, a couple of weeks now, uh, two million people, for instance, marching on Washington and, and uh, in protest of uh, both Obama, Obama, Obama's health care, but also the economic situation, we're in and so forth. Uh, can you see anything in regards to where America is heading in, in the future, Cliff? Uh, revolution, insofar as the American Revolution, is not yet complete in my way of thinking. But whether we term it the second American Revolution or not, the revolutionary wave has reappeared in the planetary populace. It's not limited to America. And very similar um, to the revolutionary wave that, that involved the French Revolution, the American Revolution at all, we're going to have another one of those waves that will indeed go around the whole planet. It'll start this January and February. In fact, it's already started, but it'll become very visible to everyone or to, to a larger majority of the populace in January and February. It's going to be rather nasty because the powers that be are going to be very brutal in their attempt to retain control because they figure they have nothing to lose and very short period of time in which to exercise their ability to um, alter the future. Uh, do you think we're talking about scenes that we've seen unfolded in terms of the G20 meeting in Pittsburgh? People are taken off in unmarked cars by military. People are talking about uh, FEMA camps. Do, will this thing turn violent, do you think? Oh, certainly. Uh, unfortunately, that is the case. I think that not enough um, of the revolutionary... Uh, movement that's coming through will be, I think it'll be too rapid actually. I think that the revolutionary movement will explode too rapidly within the populace for it to be contained and be smart and develop into a non-violent revolution. Plus, Americans have a tendency to be violent anyway. and We've got all kinds of weapons to that effect. So I think that the revolution within the United States will indeed be more violent uh, than it need be and probably is going to be much more violent than in other parts of the planet. But it's going to spread throughout the rest of the planet because it's not really a revolution against uh, Obamacare or uh, the economic situation that Obama can control. A lot of people may think he's at the top of the pyramid, but he's 27 layers down in security clearance. So he's 27 layers down in the uh, line of control. And ultimately, the revolution will be against the top layer and uh, will kind of bypass all the minion and the political elite class. If we talk about outcome, outcome here or uh, the, the motive or, or why people are doing this, 
are, are we talking about basically the overthrow of the, of the new world order system here, or what do you see that this is? Uh, you can look at it a couple of different ways. If you want to look at it at the mundane political level, you're indeed talking about just that, the overthrow of the new world order system, because there's enough people on the planet at the moment that we can no longer afford to pay for a political elite that uh, doesn't have to work, so to speak. So everybody on the planet works except for the political elite, the royals, the religious elite, and they eat at our expense. And this is going to become too critical over these next couple of years for us to allow that, simply because of the pressure on everybody being able to eat is going to become too too great. But at the same time, we're also going through a period of time that Gerda Jeff uh, referred to as the Solalunius, and that is external energies from outer space, so to speak, are making their impact felt on our solar system and indeed upon us because here we are as those vibrating uh, antennae. So so at, it is true at one level anyway to think that the revolutionary trend originates off planet and is perhaps part of our galactic alignment kind of a, of a thing. Really interesting. And, and uh, so in terms of the whole 2012 uh, discussion here, uh, is there additions that you can make to to that discussion? I think a lot of people who are listening to this program will be aware of what we're referring to when we when we mention that date, and I, and I guess that you have a pretty good eye on it yourself. Uh, many people predict doom and gloom. Obviously, if you talk about um, transformation of the human consciousness, pretty much even down to the level of our DNA changing and so forth. Uh, what can you add to 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 that, or will you agree with with what is being what what the consensus is out there about these uh, about this subject, Cliff? Uh, I'm not really aware of a of a consensus. I am aware of a number of burgeoning um, centers of thought around it, and I'm I'm pretty much uh, in tune with a lot of them. My personal thing is that I'm real paranoid about it because I observe the macro level changes in my environment. The sun shifting over from yellow to white over the last uh, 12, 15 years, the increase in intensity, and so on. So there is certainly something there. I don't know that I would characterize it as doom and gloom because I have a tendency to think of everything as a challenge, good or bad, and it's just a matter of dealing with those challenges. It's a much saner way of, of looking at the universe, in my opinion. But from the people that want to think of it as doom and gloom, they're going to get plenty of challenges to, that will meet their definition, I'm sure. I don't know about the idea of standing DNA changing or the idea of an ascension from a vibratory state in a material world. Let me state that, indeed, there may be a giant energy wave that comes from the center of the galac uh, galaxy, the uh, Milky Way galaxy, that we happen to align with, and it, indeed, may send out a, such an energetic uh, uh, wave as to cause our DNA to, to uh, transform, so to speak, into a greater level of density. But in my way of thinking, that means instantaneous death because our existent uh, three-D three, three, uh, material body